What is DNS? Uh, so DNS stands for Domain Name Service. Okay, so essentially the, the purpose of DNS is to translate a domain name to an IP address. Okay, so it translates domain name to IP address. So you may have seen IP addresses before. So an IP address could be, you know, 192.168.1.45. All right, that's an example of an IP address. So four sets of numbers, okay? We won't go into how to form IP addresses or what IP addresses are structured like in this, uh, but that's essentially what it does. It converts a domain name into an IP address. So for example, media server is the name of my uh, domain or my, or my host name. So this computer where I'm recording this video is called media server, but it also has an IP address associated to it of 172.168.1.100, okay? So at the end of the day, what a DNS uh, server does is it just makes, uh, uh, it's easier for a person to remember domain names as opposed to remembering IP addresses. So for example, you know, the web address www.icloud.com is easier to remember than the IP address that it could be associated with, okay? So that www.icloud.com is associated to an IP address. So instead of me having to put an IP address into the search bar, which I could do, I could put it into this, into the address bar up here, and it would still resolve to that same website, but it just makes it easier to put in the Domain name. Okay, so at the end of the day, the, the main purpose is to translate a domain name, which could be that, into an IP address, which something like that, for example. Okay, so let's go over the basic record types in DNS. So within DNS, within a DNS server, you can set up what are called record types. Now, there are more than these five that I've listed here, but these generally are the most common. Uh, DNS records, um, but as I did mention, there are a few more records that you can also use as well. So first one is the A name record, okay? So A name is, the main purpose is to map a host name to an IP address, okay? So Oh, and another thing is it is a IP version 4, okay? So you may know that there's IP version 4. So this, this here is an IP version 4. And we are slowly moving, which is what this is for, which we'll go over a little bit, is IP version 6, all right? But this will be mapping a host name to an IP address in IP version 4. Okay, so let's just see how this uh, works. So for example, if I go into here and I want to ping, so you can do this on your computer as well. If you're on a Windows, if you're on a Mac, it doesn't matter. You can just use ping. On Windows, you'd use the command prompt. So you just open up one of those black MS-DOS windows and just type in ping and then the host name. So let's ping iCloud.com, ping. All right, so that's returned that IP address, okay? So now we know that if we ping that, we get that, all right? And it's exactly the same. So if I go into here and I type in that, well, it's not going to work maybe because they don't have it set up in the back end. Forget about that. But it should generally resolve to the same location. All right. So we now know that www.icloud.com, the host name or the, or the, the, uh, the domain name, points to this IP version 4 IP address. All right. You can do this with any website. 
to find out what the IP address is of that website. So the fact that this resolved, all right, is because there's an A name record that exists on a DNS server somewhere in the world, whether it could be at, it could be at Apple or it could be elsewhere. All right, so that's just an example of an A name record. All right, so that will resolve to that and it does work, okay? A, 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 so for A name uh, is exactly the same, but it'll resolve to an IP version six. Now, not many companies are using IP version six just yet, but it will eventually be needed for the purpose of us running out of IP version four IP addresses. So eventually we will run out of IP addresses. At that stage, we'll do, I guess, an official swap into IP, IP version six. So exactly the same, you will ping that, but instead you'll be given a IP version six IP, right? Which is a completely different convention altogether, all right? Then we've got a couple more. We've got a C name, an MX, and a P, excuse me, PTR record, okay? So a C name record is, uh, best I can describe it, it's an alias of another name, all right? So how could I explain this? So let, let's say we've got uh, www.icloud.com or I've got my address, itguitarguy.com. All right, so I'm on my computer, yeah, and I've got a, let, let's say I've got a DNS server running on my computer. Instead of me having to ping itguitarguy.com to resolve my IP address, all right, which could be 172.16.1.200, I can just ping guitar, okay? So I can create a C name record that says guitar equals www.itguitarguy.com, all right? Or just let's say itguitarguy.com. So what that's gonna do is if I ping guitar, it's going to resolve to itguitarguy.com, which in turn, because there's an A name record, resolves to my IP address, okay? An MX record is used for your mail. So for your email, for example, uh, it's used to uh, route SMTP traffic, right? So if you have, say, mail service, uh, it will uh, prioritize, I guess, however I spell it, prioritize um, my mail service or, my, or, or where prioritize mail delivery. Okay. So I tell um, the DNS server that I want mail or emails through SMDP to go to certain locations based on MX records. So if I have multiple, uh, let's say exchange service, for example, I can route my traffic accordingly, okay? Again, you wouldn't use MX too much unless you're really running a mail server uh, at home, for example. Uh, and then lastly is a PTR record. So a PTR record, well, let's, before we go into that, let's go into A names again. So if you are setting up a DNS server at home or, or elsewhere, um, most of the time, if you were to say define a, uh, if you were to create a domain controller or anything like that, A names will generally get created automatically. At times you may need to create them yourself uh, if you need to. A PTR record is a reverse lookup. All right, so it's a reverse DNS lookup. Okay, so essentially what we did before, so we've got www.icloud.com. 
I could do a reverse lookup on that. So the main purpose is to map an IP to a host. So you remember that up here we've got map host to an IP address. Okay, so my host equals that IP. All right, this is the opposite. So this I put in my PTR will be 173.222.194.46 equals iCloud.com. Okay, so there is a command, for example, that you can do on a computer called an NS lookup. Uh, you can do it on, on Windows or on a Mac. On a Mac, you can do it through the lookup portal here. Or if you've got a terminal window, you can also do it through there. Uh, and on Windows, you can do it through your command prompt. So you can just do an NS lookup and the IP address. And if PTR records are in place, it will retrieve that. Okay, it's just a handy way of retrieving, like if you don't know what a host name is, what, what the actual DNS uh what the domain name is, you could do a PTR or a reverse lookup on uh, an IP address and that will retrieve it. Okay, so that is the five main ones, A name, uh, AAA names, AAA names, C name, MX and PTR. Uh, so I hope that uh, makes sense. You can go into a lot more detail about oh, how DNS works and, and how to set it up, etc. But that is the basic overview.